Buddy so and it's Jane Slater here with you and uh, today I want to talk about adding insulation to your existing home. So with my house I've got two attic hatches. One is over here and then the next one is in the closet in our main bedroom. Now I want to go through a couple of items that uh, you want to get to prepare yourself and of course you're going to get the rental machine with the uh, types of insulation that you want, either fiberglass or uh, cellulose. I did put a little comparison video that you can check out on the cellulose. Now for shallow attics, typically cellulose is really good because it's got a bigger R value for per inch that you install. So uh, with my house, I did go with fiberglass because that's uh, what our company installs mostly. And uh, it's a lot easier to install, I find. Uh, personally, I've installed both. Uh, so let's uh, take a look at the materials that you'll need for this project. So number one, what uh, you're gonna wanna invest in is uh, some mats so that you can cover your floor. And because typically, you're going to look at how you're going to get access to the attic. So of course, if you're looking at the garage here, it's pretty simple to access that. You just need yourself a nice ladder and then you can access that attic access without worrying too much about the floor space being dirty. Uh, because of course, your machine is going to be on the outside of your house. But when you're going to go into the second attic, so in this house, for instance, you would go through here, walk up the stairs. So you see there's a lot of floor space that you need to cover with those floor mats that I was talking to you about. And here's that second attic access. So you see, it's typically in the back of a house. And so of course it can't be the easiest, the farthest point from your machine. So you're gonna need to you know, cover the floor so that you can go in and out with your work boots on and not have to worry about dirtying the floor and it's gonna be easier cleanup at the end. Second thing that I want to discuss is what you need to wear in order to get this project going. So once again, I've, uh, I'm gonna put the link down below. I've already talked about the safety equipment that I typically use. Um, you guys are probably going to want to invest in these N95 masks. So they're really good. Uh, they cover your whole face and for do-it-yourself projects, you don't want to necessarily invest in a $2,000 or $200 mask. So you're going to get these boxes of 10 for about 40 bucks or all depending on where you are. So something else that you want to consider is you obviously can't do this project yourself. So you need a partner that knows how to load the machine. When you're going to be renting the machine, um, you have to keep in mind for fiberglass, the machines that Owens Corning provides, uh, you have to cut the bag in half and then you feed the open side into the machine, of course, and the bag will cut itself uh, via through the machine in slot. And then, uh, of course, you take the plastic off and don't feed it inside of the machine or else you're going to create some clogs. Intake rate of those machines is pretty slow. So with comparison to the machines that I use, uh, you're looking at probably four times longer uh, time to insulate uh, the attic compared to uh, the four inch hose that I use. Uh, because again, it's a much smaller machine, so the output is slower. The next thing, like I said, the ladder you want to have one of those so that you have uh, easy access because as you're finishing up the project and when you're climbing in and out of the attic it's best to use a ladder because there's something that you want to stand on when you finish up around the attic hatch there's different types of vents that you can purchase uh, you can even make your own i've used cardboard myself too in some homes where you can and the only thing is, is that of course you need to bend some of the cardboard and if you're worried about having the cardboard get too much moisture, then sure you can go with the styrofoam vents, but I personally have used cardboard ones. They'll 
dry up a little bit, but again, they're completely fine. I've seen them even after 10, 20 years and they're still up there, still doing the, the job that they need to do. The biggest thing is if you have moisture and you're worried about that, that means that you haven't air sealed and vapor barriered your ceiling properly. So that's where I wouldn't be so worried because you should be uh, vapor burying and air sealing your attic ceiling or your, your uh, attic floor first so that uh, you don't have that problem. Uh, again, the biggest things is your, if you've got an old furnace exhaust or heat, hot water heater tank exhaust, you wanna air seal right around that using uh, spray foam, a canister that uh, you can use, or even using some of the HVAC tape, uh, the aluminum tape that uh, you can purchase, because again, all depending on the fire code, you definitely wanna check that out to make sure that uh, you're not going to have the the stuff that you're installing um, not uh, heat rated uh, so you want to be careful with that okay so we've covered the material that you're going to need so another piece of material that you're going to need for your attic hatch is a border especially in older homes the border is not high enough so you're going to have to raise that on a budget you can use cardboard again but it all depends on how you can fasten that cardboard. Also keep in mind that if it's a completely open attic, uh, it's uh, going to be difficult to get back in and not damage the cardboard. So that's why a lot of times I also use sheets of insulation. Sheets of insulation, however, are more expensive. And so uh, keep that in mind. Also, I'd like you to take a look at my attic hatch tips video. Um, so that uh, you are a little bit more informed as to what to look for for the attic hatch. A can of spray foam is also vital so that you can finish off and seal up that uh, attic hatch and the attic hatch border and also get some of that weather strip so that you can put your attic hatch right against that and it's a nice air seal. So now let's look at the awesome walkthrough of an older home so you have a better idea as to what you're going to get yourself into. So I'm going to show you from start to finish uh, how I do it and then you can see how you apply all the material that I mentioned and then modify it all depending on how your attic is going to look. Also take a look at my other videos so that maybe one of the attics that I show is similar to the one that you have so you've got a better strategy. Okay, so take a look. So you got one attic hatch over here, or one attic, and then this upper one. I'm gonna extend the vents, and then we're gonna top it up to an R60. The idea here is we're gonna raise the attic hatch with these sheets and I'm actually going to insulate this and then walk my way over there or crawl to the lower attic to then finish that off. Successfully got the hose in. Now we're gonna build the attic hatch.
Okay. Yeah, so, um, are you able to build the, uh, the attic hatch yourself? How do you want me to do the sheets? Like, it's just cut the attic hatch, like, in half. Because this should be two sheets like this. Or two half sheets. Like this is what I'm talking about here. You see all these cracks, right? So this is inefficient. I'm gonna use the material I have right now, but uh, if you wanna get this done, you can also use like a can of spray foam right around here for your own attic hatch. So just to be on the safe side, I'm just gonna add another piece like this across on the other sense there so that it's all good. Let's get this going. Right, so got this attic hatch, then we're gonna get some blowing. I'm gonna fill this bottom cavity all the way in because this is around where the bathroom is. I'll show you this corner here, okay? See how bare it is? So, the way that we do is try to get as close as possible. Turn the machine on and fill that gap just like that. Right? Right in there. Just like this. Right, you hear that? So you just get right in there. I've installed enough venting so that uh, the roof has good venting because on the edges there, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Like you see how high the R value goes, or the R60 goes, so it'll basically cover the uh, the vent anyway. Even these shallow ones. Oh. <laughs> right. So I didn't cover too much of that one is great but I'm gonna do a couple more touch-ups but you see how it's filling that corner all right first attic is complete there's the attic hatch that can still open I'm gonna make our way this way now to the second attic our second attic first attic and here's a new wall and there's the entrance.
complete 23 high. So, I got it pretty proud of myself. I did all of this here, staple that so that there is airflow, and we're reusing some material. It was bags of the blown insulation here. Last one. Not much left. Hi, I uh, just wanted to mention that uh, I have done this a thousand times and I'm not even joking about this. I'm an attic insulator and so I can do between three to six houses per day. Um, so I've seen all types of different attics. Uh, give a nice thumbs up, click on that awesome thumbs up button and subscribe down below. Don't forget to also click on that notification button so you don't miss any future videos. I post every Tuesday on various attic insulation tips. And on the Friday, I actually do a translation in French for that same video. Uh, put a comment down below for any questions that you have and I'll get to you as soon as I can. All right, take care.